content and process. And we're going to look at how you can use this if you're building your brand from scratch or how we're going to be showing how I went from 100 subscribers to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube within 10 months using this system and using repurpose. So let's get right in. Welcome everybody. Great to see you all. So today we're going to be talking about how you can automate your content. We're going to be using one of my favorite tools, repurpose.io. If you ever heard of, of repurpose.io, it allows you to create great content and let, uh, let repurpose publish it everywhere. So I view it almost like the Zapier of content creation. You can create once and then be able to chop it up and create smaller pieces that go everywhere. Now, there are a lot of different options with this platform, but I would just want you to think about this is for you if you're a solo entrepreneur or if you have a small team and you're trying to figure out how to manage all of these different platforms. You've got Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, you know, you have your own podcast, there's all of these things, and then you get weighed down. This is where you can find out how you can streamline your process and all of those things. Ellie, oh, good evening. Thank you so much for coming by, seeing us from the Philippines. Thank you so much for joining us this uh, this morning and evening for you over there. Okay, so again, this is all for you if you're trying to build out your process and all of those things. Um, I'm going to show you what I used and step-by-step step exactly how I grew my audience from zero in this niche and then building it out. Um, right now, we're almost at 8,000 for this channel. And also, too, how we built out our newsletter that is just about 2,300, something like that. Um, but it has, I think it has a 32% open and like 4.1 click rate, something like that. So it's it's pretty healthy. And I want to really make sure that I'm letting you know that we're showing you how to grow it with purpose and not just numbers, but quality numbers, quality people that want your content. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So again, if you're interested in this, let me know in the comment section down below what kind of where you're at in your, your business. Are you just starting out? You're trying to you know, grow your audience, you're trying to sell something, you're already established, but now you're trying to put out more content in the world. Let me know in the content sec uh, in the comment section down below if you're watching on YouTube or wherever. Terry, great to see you, by the way. Okay, so we're going to look at a question and this is going to set the theme and I'm going to show you step by step what I've done in the past and how you can be doing this. And remember, if you're you if you want to try out repurpose.io, I'm going to drop my affiliate link. You don't have to use my affiliate link, but this can help you. But if you just want to use it, go over to repurpose.io. You don't have to use my affiliate link if you don't want to. OK, so um, we're going to get started. And one of the questions I had right before I went live. Well, this was yesterday. And then. Uh, Miss uh, Krista brought it up again today. She's saying, hey, Doc, big fan of the 75 No Code Biz Ideas ebook on uh, AppSumo. Thank you so much. I'm really uh, I'm really feeling the repurpose.io concept. How would you recommend building an email newsletter in such a business? Thanks, Doc. Okay, so we're going to start from scratch how we did this and then how you can be doing this too. And I'm not a genius. I'm going to be showing you exactly taking it from other people's ideas and then what worked for me. Trying to kick out, uh, Terry saying, trying to start our newsletter from social media account. Awesome, Terry. Okay, good. So this is what I did. Um, I took a model where I took a just a Notion doc. It wasn't a WordPress page or anything. I just took a Notion doc and I set something up where it said, hey, my name is Doc Williams. I built three businesses with one no-code tool every single show. Uh, that's how the premise started. It says, let's see how fast we can make you money. And it says, get episodes straight to your inbox. So right here, I just took a very simple landing page idea, trends.co. And this is a style you'll see a couple different ways. You'll see this on trends.co or trends.vc. You're making a promise and you're, you're just getting their email address, right? So finding the next big things just got easy. Access thousands of vetted business ideas. They can launch in a weekend in a computer, uh, community who can help you make it happen. So trends is giving the promise of the community and then you're getting your email address. 
I'm doing the same thing. I'm just saying, hey, if you're interested in no-code tools and you like these episodes, uh, you'll get them straight to your inbox, right? So giving the promise and then having them set up. You can use Google Forms or anything like that. But the main thing is I'm setting up a landing page and giving quality content, and then I'm building the list, okay? If you look at the another example, trends.vc, trends.vc, let me do that again. I can spell it right. Okay, so it says join for uh, 45,000 uh, entrepreneurs discovering new markets and ideas. Save 2,000 hours of market research within a five minute report. So you're getting the, you're, they're clearly telling what the value proposition, why you would have this. Right. So, Terry, if uh, as you're watching this and you're thinking about starting a newsletter from our social media account, I would say what kind of content, what kind of great content can you give to your audience? Are you still experimenting with it? Are you still thinking about like what would be great for your audience? That's where I would start with and have a landing page. Right. Um, also, too, if you look at this one before, you could see examples of like the, I think this one with trends.vc, you could have seen past episodes or past issues. Some email, uh, some newsletters, you can see uh, past ones that they've done. That way you can see what kind of content they produce. Hustle, um, the hustle.co used to do that as well. So if you do the hustle.co, you have the main landing page. Okay, right here, get daily news straight to your inbox, sign up for the hustle business and tech in five minutes or less, right? So you're giving a guarantee and then you're going from here. I think I'll just have to search online archives to see all the past issues. Let's see, hustle, and I'll go home. Okay, yeah, newsletter, and then I can see archives. So they have the main landing page where it's very simple. And then they have this one where it's all the back issues that you could just consume as well, right? I just had to search for it. Okay, so the first step when you're repurposing your content is you're just making a landing page for people to now sign up and get on your new your mailing list. Um, okay, now how are we going to, again, you came here, how are we going to start repurposing? How are we going to start giving the content away and making sure that we're doing this in a simple fashion. My money, I triple down on this, is live streaming. As you're seeing this right now, right? So you're watching this, you're watching this on live streaming, either you're watching a replay or you're watching this live. Now, what we're doing here, I can start chopping it up based on the timestamp, what kind of content I want to repurpose. For example, there was a part in this episode at the beginning, I looked at a person on Twitter that asked me a question. I can look at the timestamp and I can cut this out and I can make this a portion of having this its own clip, right? Terry in the audience asked about um, the newsletter. So I can talk about, hey, this is the first section. So even though that this is going to be about an hour plus, I can be looking at the timestamp and start chopping up that content for smaller bits that I can put on LinkedIn, that I can put on Twitter, all of these things, these videos. So keep that in mind, okay? Now, I'm going to show you, even if you're like, but Doc, like, I, I, I don't want to be, that's too much spontaneous. Maybe I'm, I'm nervous when I'm working. Is there a formula? This is the formula that I use to scale it from 100 to 1,000. Um, right here, I'm going to show you step by step. Every single show, I had the intro of what I was going to be talking about, and I set up the show into these sections. Why people need this, which is why people need the, the tool, who, who benefits from the tool, and three ways to make money with the tool right there. One main feature and then MP, M, uh, MVP uses, right? So right here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different pieces of content that I could be chopping up and putting out. And so I have my main hour content that if people want to sift through it, 
great. They can watch it from the beginning. But maybe someone just cares about why people need this certain product. Great. I have a clip that's like four minutes here. Who benefits? I have another three minutes here. And then three ways to make money with the tool. I can have those three ways and then see which one pops, right? And then I can make more content or divide the three right there. One main feature I can put out again and I can tag the company because they love that I'm talking about them. And then MVP uses the minimal viable product way to get started. Then I have that. So it was structured every single show that I have. Now I'm telling you this before we get into repurpose because I want to show you that it's just a script. When people are watching the live stream, they're like, oh, okay, I, I guess there was a there was a reasoning to this. This is exactly what I then went into repurpose, and then I put it on autopilot, and we'll see in a second. Eli says, quick question, when are you scheduled on the no-code conference? And I couldn't find when it was start or when it's finished, though. Eli, um, let's see. I was on the no-code API conference a couple weeks ago. Um, so that was a couple weeks ago. Let's see. Uh, it depends. I'm not on the new, I'm not on the no code conference from the Webflow one though. Yeah. Let me know. Hey, Chris. So, Chris. Yeah, yeah. It's not a problem. Um, hit me up here. I'll put it in the, con uh, in the comment section. Oh, I'll do LinkedIn too. Or I don't. I mean, I'm on LinkedIn, but I don't check LinkedIn all that much. But if you want it, I'll uh, I'll put it in. Yeah, so I can send you the link. I thanks. Um, I think I can look at the API Way conference, and I was on that one. Let me see. I think they they posted it already. Let me see about this. Great question, Eli. Yeah, that was last that was last month. But let me check the uh, API Way. And let's add that. I think I was on that. For instance, I'm on that YouTube channel over there. Let me check right now. API dot way. Is that a is that a thing? Yeah. See, I thought I was going crazy for a second. Okay. API dot way. And where is their YouTube channel? Okay, I just found it. Uh, hold on. Okay. Am I on this? I think I'm on this channel. Hold on one second. One year ago. Convert. Okay. So I need to find that. I'll get it for you, Eli. Are you on the list? Are you on a newsletter? We'll check that. Okay. So. This is the format of how we did it, right? So we have our, and um, Terry, if this makes sense, let me know. If you have more questions, let me know too. Okay, so remember, our full site, we just had a landing page to start with. Get the episode straight to your inbox. And then we had our um, we, we had our format every month. Now, if you're looking at this for a second, I'll share it for a second to show you exactly what I'm talking about. This is our template. Build template episode number, how we would break it down, best four, and then we'd have the five, and then build your MVP, it would be the three same steps over and over again, right? So we have that. Okay, cool. And then we're gonna now go into repurpose in a second, and we're gonna look into this and see how we set it up. The North Dallas, Worship Center says, hey, Doc, thanks for the vid on Tioto. No problem. Welcome, by the way. Uh, I ended up purchasing it. Those deals don't come around too often. Have you seen any similar deals like that? But uh, for a no-code app developer tool like AppGyver, too. That's a good question. Um, not really. It depends on what you mean. I mean, there's a couple no-code tools that are on AppSumo, but it, it depends. There's nothing like ad, AppGyver. There's one that is very specific, like Beezer, but it's um, it's very different than AppGyver. If you're looking for a no-code platform to scale, that could be an option for you. Um, I've done I've done an episode. You'll see 
you can check my YouTube channel and I did a breakdown of it, but I'll just show it real quick. Yeah, it's Beezer. It's open right now. It's very limited what it can do, the different types of apps, but I mean, it's a lifetime deal to build out these different apps. If I was going to do it, I'd probably start with like a license two or above. Um, and then I would start white labeling it and uh, building my my brand around it. But there's a lot of things you could do it with it. So Beezer would be the thing. Yeah. Great question. Great question. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, cool. All right. So let's look at uh, repurpose.io and let's look behind the hood and how we're going to get started. And now that we have the format, how we start using this. So when we log into repurpose.io, there's a few different things you can do. You have the workflows, connections, the templates, which allows you to build your own templates for your own brand. And those are the three main areas. Now, to get started, what you need to do is first have connections. This allows you to connect all of those different things. So if you're familiar with like Zapier or any like automation platform, you first need to designate what kind of what connections do you have? So let's look at a couple examples that I have. I have my audio podcast, I have my different Facebook pages, Lipson, LinkedIn, Twitter. So the first thing is I'd write down what what are you going to have the starting point? For me, I'm always having this starting point with YouTube because I am going to be live streaming so I can turn that live stream into a podcast. I can turn it into multiple pieces of content. So to get started in the easiest portion right here is to really start with YouTube because you can repurpose this the easiest way and it's very easy to get started now there's actually a live streaming tier to get started with repurpose so i can start with um youtube right now i'm gonna say youtube and i have to do a new connection but this new connection i'm gonna make it for our second channel uh for our uh smart contracts and crypto channel so i'm going to say web3 prep youtube channel Okay. So I have that. It's going to say connect. It's going to ask me to connect to a certain channel or log in to my Gmail account. It's going to ask me again, like, um, choose your um, choose your Gmail. I'm going to say, okay. Taking that and saying, can I manage all of your videos? Manage the account. I'm going to say yes. And then it says success. So I'm going to say done here. And now if I look at the bottom, or it'll show up somewhere. Here we go. Web3 prep YouTube channel. Eli, yeah. So we are doing, we're doing stuff with blockchain. For a lot of the stuff, we're not doing it with no code. There are a couple ways to do blockchain with no code, with Builder and Bubble. But the way that we're building out things with smart contracts and the very specifics, it's not, no code can't do exactly what we want to do yet. So hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll bring it over to this channel that you can do crypto with, uh, with, with no code. But that's why we had to separate cha the channel because the other side is more coding. Yeah. Yeah. With solidity. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Exactly. Exactly. All right. So we have the connections right here. So that's just an example, right? So we have web three prep and then over here on web workflows, this allows us to create the workflow and do exactly what we're saying in automating terms, right? So let's take a, a couple things. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to do all these things. If you look at it, I have some that are inactive, some that are active just because over time I've, I've changed what I wanted to do. But just imagine I can tell it to do exactly what I want. For example, YouTube live stream to LinkedIn snippets, Zoom webinars to YouTube full videos. This allows you to make all of these workflows that work for your for your brand. Okay, so if I'm thinking about this and where to start, I first need to go to my connections. And for me, I would write down on a piece of paper or get a Word doc or a Notion doc. I'd write down all of the places that you want to start and end with your content, okay? You've got a starting point. Your starting point would be something like, I would pick YouTube Live 
And if you can, I would also pick a Facebook page as well. That's because we can get the transcriptions and do a couple other cool things with it. But if it's too much, at the very basic, you're going to pick the beginning part of a YouTube uh, channel. And then you're going to say, where do you want that content to go? For example, if you're really big on LinkedIn, you're a business professional and you want to start going over on that side, write that down. You want to do LinkedIn snippets that will go to your business page. Perhaps you're really big on Twitter or you have a large following or you want to have a large following on Twitter. Okay, connect your Twitter account. Um, if you already do um, a lot of Zoom calls and you do Zoom interviews, connect your Zoom account together to it, right? So you pick out which ones work for you. The other thing is too, if you're using pod podcast.co, Lipson, if you want your LinkedIn, if you want your YouTube video to then make a podcast and go directly to creating a podcast, you can do that too. <laughs> yeah, you can do all of those things. So the very first step you need to do is connect all the different places you want to go to, okay? The next thing, the workflow. I'm going to decide how I want to create a workflow that works for the audience. So what I'm going to do is probably do YouTube to Twitter all about Web3 when we're doing our smart contracts and talking about crypto. So what do I do? I'm going to do create a new workflow. I'm going to say um, Web3 YouTube live stream. Right. And I'm going to say to Twitter. Right. So we see that. Okay, we're good. Okay. So we see that. Had to switch over on that screen to make sure I see it. Okay. Next, it's going to say choose an input type. Choose an input type. I'm going to say YouTube. Right. And then it's going to say choose an input connection. I'm going to say Web3. Choose a playlist, main channel, no playlist. From here, it says choose an action. Um, I'm going to do upload video. I'm going to do upload video. Um, you can choose convert video to audio. You can do that as well because remember, I can choose to make it a podcast or I can do whatever I want if I want to or make it an audio experience. I'm just going to say upload video. I'm going to say snippets. Okay. Then it says choose an output connection. Now I can choose here where I want to output. I'm going to choose Twitter. And I'm going to say done. Bam. Okay. So now if you look at this right here, I have my Web3 YouTube live stream to Twitter and I put it to be snippets. So now. I can view my content and decide if I what kind of snippets I want, how I want to um, connect it, and all those things. And I got to resync and and put this stuff together. But that's the beginning, right? I can decide to do it manually, which means I can tell it to push it to the content or manually push it to the platform if I'm not ready for it, or I can decide, hey, um, I don't want to review it; just push it to the to the platform when when it's ready um to me sometimes i f find out that i i should have reviewed it before i push it but once you get in the hang of it you can definitely automate it but to start with i would do manually and then just say okay push all of that stuff or put a schedule so i can view the content here i can do the gear icon it says video style learn how to customize your video you can do all this stuff right I can say uh, vertical video, so I can change it to a vertical video. I can make it a square video. I can have the captions here, um, burn the captions into the video. I can disable it or put it there if I want to. And by the way, we have a full uh, like video breakdown of all of this, uh, and we'll be able to drop it in the comment section down below after this as well. Uh, so you can see this for yourself and step by step. Um, you can choose which content to publish, auto-publish, all content on this date in newer. So you can say, hey, from this point on, we're going to go forward and start doing this. And you can have call to actions in your content. You can do a lot of different things. Again, to not be overwhelmed, 
I say just get used to starting it and then you can go into the specifics later, you know, when when you're ready. I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like once it's all hooked up right here. So you can see in the background right here, we had YouTube to LinkedIn and you could see that we were bringing in this content. We had different parts right here. We could create a new snippet. All right. And you can start creating new snippets if you want. We had a bunch of different styles and timings and everything like this. This is a smaller one. And then we can go and create a new snippet off of that. Let's see, questions. Yeah, Terry. Yeah, so again, I, I would really focus on like how your, how do you want it to, what do you want it to automate? Okay, so the question is like, how do we start using this? How do we start growing and, you know, building our business with using repurpose.io. Well, now, instead of having a full team where they had to spend, first of all, we had to either pay for more outsourcing uh, for people to do this manually. This streamlined our process. So we had to have, we had less people, which was great. And then also we utilized their time a lot, a lot. Well, we optimized their time. So that way they were working on projects that really mattered instead of just worried about when they were going to schedule everything and all those things, repurposed it, all of those things. Because again, it synced it with all of the other platforms. And then you had to just spend less than five to eight minutes if we want to schedule out all of our content for the next month. So it was a win-win for everyone on the team. Okay. So we were talking about that. Now the question is, well, that sounds great, but how did your subscriber? Uh, how did your subscribers increase? How did you start getting people on the newsletter? Okay, so this was the beauty of it. Um, because we can move so much quicker, we just looked at what our audience wanted, either in Reddit posts or on Twitter, and we looked at what people were asking questions on, and then I would just make a live stream on it and create thirty-five pieces of content just by cutting it up. So again. The, the let's look at the number of how we can do it i'm using one live stream and then i'm chopping it up all of these different pieces and then based on which piece worked i would just cut it down more so like for example the three ways to make money with uh with the tool today i would do one video that's three ways if one idea really resonated with the audience or people cared i would then repurpose another one and just release another clip of one of the snippets. And how do we get the, to the number of 35 to 42 different pieces of content? Because we were also on YouTube, we were on Twitter, we were on Facebook, we were on LinkedIn, and all of those pieces of content, we would then just put out all those pieces on different platforms and we'd stagger it. We wouldn't release them all at the same time because depending on the platforms, our audience reacted or was on on those platforms at different times. For example, we know on YouTube, our audience is usually on from 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to about 12 noon. So we put all of our content around those peak times. On Twitter, it's usually in more of the afternoon or evening for us. And then, um, no, excuse me, that's Twitter. And then LinkedIn is mornings. We only do it twice a week usually on Mondays and Thursdays. So depending on what's going on with the platform, we just base it on our analytics. So how would how could I design campaigns? Okay, let's break this down real quick. Okay, so the first question I would have is, it's a great question. All right, so look at this, by the way. This is another thing. So Terry's asking me in the, in the, con, uh, in the comments, how can I, how could I design a campaign? This is now another clip I'm going to be using in my content because it's relevant. I can put it in the repurpose group. And this is something that can be evergreen, right? So you're just looking for different, different spots to start um, creating content. So let's talk about this. How to design. How, and I'm going to say how to design content campaigns with repurpose. Yeah, Terry. Yep. Love it. Notion's awesome. Okay. So 
here we go. I got to have a little icon. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so how to design. Um, oh, I need a little background too. Sorry. Add a cover. There we go. Oh, look. I wasn't expecting that, but okay. So how to design content campaigns with repurpose. The first thing is look at the goal. So the goal that you had, Terry, was, I believe, to start our newsletter. Okay. Start our newsletter. Okay. So the first part is why should they join your newsletter? Okay. So do you already have a piece of content that can be a lead magnet when you join that you're giving them a resource guide, a checklist or something like that? Or are you just telling them, hey, if you're on the newsletter that we're going to answer your questions and we're going to actually send you a five second or a 10 second or a 30 second video to answer every single person that joins. The first 200 people, we're going to give a personalized um, analysis or we're going to give you some kind of value personally to you if you join, right? So that's the first level. That's what we're going on. Let's see. Yeah. Eli is talking about who's your demographics. All right. So we're going with that, but let's just like not even talk about demographic. Like, let's just talk about bare bones, bare bones. Why should someone join your newsletter? What content or what kind of, um, great content or great service or value can they, can you get, can they get when they join you? Okay. The next point that I would say is the content campaign that I would next go into I'm going to go with live stream. So I would say, what would you live stream about? Why would you go live to teach? So it depends on your, uh, your, um, your content or your, your demographic. I don't know, Terry, or, or, you know, what field are you in industry, but you can live stream about anything and you can tell us in the comments if you'd rather not, that's totally fine. But I would just choose to live stream one time live stream. Okay. So I'd live stream. Okay. And if you're thinking about, well, no one's going to be there, remember, this is repurposing your content. It doesn't matter if someone's there or not. It's just about having that as a library, excuse me, a library that you can then reference as well, right? So I'm going to think about topics to live stream about, topics to live stream about. I can talk about, like, maybe you're going to do an intro or beginners live stream. You can talk about um, answering. You can do a Q&A. You can do a how-to. Any of those things, right? So if you're starting with how to design content campaigns with repurpose, I would just decide, okay, so if we're going to... Oh, Dominic. Dominic, what's going on? How you been? It has been a while. It has been a while. Okay, you're in cybersecurity. Okay, so are, are you targeting other businesses to hire you or are you targeting ones that are trying to learn how to get into the cybersecurity field? So if we're going to go B2B, right, maybe you're talking about why every, depending on what kind of business you're going to go after, why every small business needs cybersecurity or why, you know, where where are you targeting, right? Ones that are small business, but they don't have cybersecurity yet. Ones that already have cybersecurity, but now they actually have one that really sucks and you guys are better, those kind of things. Or are you in the cybersecurity space where people are trying to get their first job in cybersecurity? They don't know where to start. They don't have the right, they don't know the right certification, all of those things. Okay, so once we have those, that structure of who we're gonna help, you're just going to live stream and deliver that content. You're going to live stream and deliver that content. And the thing is, as you're going through it, at the end, in the middle, whatever it is, you're, you're referring back to it. Hey, if you're really liking this content, if this is helping you out, let us know because you can join our newsletter because we're going to either answer your question or again, you're saying either we're going to give you a resource guide to deep dive into this. You're still giving them a reason why they should join your newsletter. It depends on your audience. Some people want to be updated and some people want the latest thing that you put out, the newest, the newest, uh, the newest episode. But some people usually want something very specific to help them in their life. So then you could go that route.
okay? Just like for an example, we I talked about it earlier uh, with with Build With Me and what we did with ours. Um, originally, we didn't. We were just giving away. Um, we gave seventy five no code business ideas away as the hook for why they needed to join the um, the list. Then we saw people were saying, "Hey, we missed your live show. We just want to have the newest episode in our inbox." So that was the hook right there. Right. We're going to go with one more. Uh, we do a lot of content around My First Million, which is a podcast. So what we were giving away was a search engine that actually was all of the ideas from My First Million. And then they got access to that. Right. So, again, it, it changes based on what the audience wants. And then we just made it the giveaway. Right. So we had, yeah, we had a search engine. Let me show you this. Let me show you one of our other like search engine giveaways. And we just did this on Notion as well. Let me know if this makes sense. Hold on. Collection, marketplaces, search engine, my first million. Okay. Let me bring this over here. Okay. So say for instance, right here, um, I, again, I don't really change that much. My name is Doc Williams. I build online businesses step by step. This is my first million search engine. It's all the search search by idea or episode, and it's all the different my first my first my first million ideas. And then right here we have it down here. Sign up and get a hundred business ideas. You can start in an hour with no code, and then we have more details down here. Right. So we make landing pages or we make content around live streaming. And by the way, my first million, that's what we did. We did a six hour live stream and we built a hundred ideas from the show, the podcast. And then we gave away this, right? Whatever the audience is asking for, we build the, the content around that. We do it with live stream. And then we just make landing pages on notion. Let me know if that makes sense. Uh, we target the learning training and operations, learning training, uh, and operations. Okay, we target learning training. So that I wonder, are you train are you learning and training? Is it the tech schools or it's it's the students themselves? So either way, I would still do the same way. So the first question is, I would have Terry, are you live streaming? If you're not live streaming, I would go start live streaming on your YouTube account. And the reason I would do YouTube is it ages like fine wine. If it's a search engine, so if you're creating content on YouTube. You never know when it can pop off later. If you live stream only on Facebook, it will bury the content and you won't get, you know, that content later on might not pop off. We have tons of um, live streams and we have it with our students and uh, clients. They could live stream and it's an, it's a topic two years later that pops just because it's topical in the news right there. So it always allows your SEO to go further. And you can refer back to it in tons. If your students are asking or the training or operations, if they're looking for things, you're going to be recommended in YouTube or Google searches because Google owns YouTube. And so it's a great experience. So number one, start live streaming, go live. And it doesn't matter if it's five minutes, 15 minutes, you're answering the questions of what's happening. Let me know if that makes sense. So if I'm looking at this, let's just break this down for you. Okay. so. The first thing is for you, if we're doing cybersecurity, cybersecurity, I can't spell security. So I, I need to, I need your help. This all one word, cybersecurity. What are, what value are you exchanging for the newsletter? It could be a cheat sheet be a resource guide, whatever. Now, the reason I'm saying this first, even before you live stream is because when you live stream, you've got to do a call to action for people to understand what's going on. Like for our, for our, um, we, we actually don't go to the newsletter as much right now because I actually want more people to watch more videos, right? So if you heard different people are asking in the comments before, they're like, hey, what should I do? Before I would have said, hey, jump on a newsletter, da, da, da. Instead, now I'm like, hey, that question, I probably made a video. Hey, go to my channel, search for this because I'm trying to get them into a, um, I'm trying to get them into a loop. 
to watch content, get value before they even jump onto the newsletter. Because that's a, a higher quality lead in person that will like the content because I'm not asking anything from them at that point. So I'm just getting them in the loop. If they watch two to three videos, they'll find the link of either the newsletter sign up or something like that. And then I'm going to get them from there. All right. So it, it depends. I'm, but I'm already trying to get that. But we started with, um, with the sign up. That's not a problem at all. So again, what value are you exchanging for the newsletter? A cheat sheet, resource guide, whatever. If you want to create a resource guide, cheat sheet, you can always use Canva for free. We used to use Beacon for years. Um, let's see, Beacon resource guide, Beacon a lead magnet. Yeah, Beacon dot buy. Um, that's what we usually do. So this allows you to create very quick, uh, you know, resource guides. They're pretty quick. All of those things. Yeah, that's what we did. Okay. But you can use Canva. You can do anything. You can even just link them to a, a Notion doc. doesn't matter. Okay. So we have that. The next part is going live. And the reason you're going to be going live is when you live stream, you can now be able to connect with different ones and people can see if you really know your information or if it's scripted or something like that. Like you're seeing when you're answering questions live, people can see if you, if you're skilled or not. Now it might be nerve wracking if you're not used to going live, but that's why we're always like, go with your expertise and go in a point of live streaming in a format that really resonates with you. If you feel like I don't want to take Q and a, or people just asking me questions randomly already have questions already there for you to then react to. For example, at the beginning of the show, right? I just pulled up Twitter and I was like, okay, Miss Krista asked me a question. I'm just going to answer it, right? If you're looking at it very similar to like the Ask Gary V model back in the day when he used to do that on YouTube, okay, you're already getting queued up to answer and you're going to show your expertise. The other version is the intro or beginners to something or a how-to. You already know cybersecurity. You know what needs to be done so you can create that how-to and just walk them through it like the back of your hand. Do something that you're comfortable with and you can just record yourself. You can either record yourself like using StreamYard or something where you're sharing your screen or you can just talk about theory by you're just holding your camera up and you're just talking to your camera about what's going on, right? So you can choose whatever works for you, but going live then allows you to chop up all of this other content. Now, if you're looking at it and you're saying, but where would I chop up the content? Where to begin? All you can say, if you don't know what to chop first, you just say, hey, if this is helpful for you, make sure in the comment section down below which section you really enjoyed or what you have, what, what questions you have for this video. That allows your audience, your target audience, to tell you what they're feeling, what they're not feeling. And that allows you, again, to make a different format of what you're trying to do. For example, we go back to, to Build With Me when we first started the show. If we look at this, this evolved over 72 episodes. The first one, if we look back, I think I had an idea of what I was going to do. But if you look at it, it's a little bit different. So right here, I had the idea. I was going to name it the tool, the idea, how to get started. That's how I was going to format it and then break it apart. And then later on, it, it changed, right? And then I actually changed it. said, who is this for? basic skills needed business idea, five different ways, uh, types of business ideas. And then I would name the five, how would I start? And then assignment, right? So if you look at it, it changed over time based on feedback. Number one, I cut back like five business ideas from one tool. I found that five was just too much for people how to get started. I found that people just didn't really care necessarily how to get started. People cared about money. So I changed it to three ways how you can start making money, right? So it's just getting feedback of what's happening. Now you might be saying, wait, wait a minute, doc, like we're just getting started. How do I know if people care or what's going on? Well, okay. Do you have existing people that have been asking you questions? Do you have anyone on your newsletter at all? Or do you even have anyone that is interested that you can just send them your demo to show them the video to get feedback. So when we when we got for when we first got started and we had no one watching the show at all, I would just send it to my friends and say, "Could you under do you understand this?" 
does this make sense? And they would just like rip it apart. They were just like, this, this doesn't make sense. It was too long here. I don't care about this. And then I would just change it. I would just go with ones that were critical and could give me some kind of feedback. Again, ideally you would want to go for the audience that would benefit from this the most, but to get feedback on where you would create your next step in content, I would go there. The second thing is I go for Reddit groups and then I look at what people are looking for and uh, go from there, right? So let me do a Reddit um, cyber security real quick. I'm looking at like, I don't know where to start. Let's take a look. Okay, so I just um, typed in Reddit cybersecurity. Okay, so it has 299K members. Do I have to join before I see anything? Hold on. Do I need a refresh? Okay, let's see. Ask me anything. Ask a Cisco anything. Okay. Microsoft New Exchange. So right here, I can look at what people are asking questions about. I could really go into the AMA and see what people are asking about. And I, I could just start here to start looking at what I should do. This is how I started with, with like no code and how people were asking about App, AppGyver. People kept asking about AppGyver in, uh, in, in um, the Reddit group for no code. And no one was answering the questions. So I just started doing videos on YouTube. Yeah, web web app stack for this. I want to build something like this. What stack would be most suitable? Like right here. I could just so I could just take this. Corporate governance and hassle needs to be done. Relevant. So I could just look at this and then I could just make a video back answering the question. Let me know if this makes sense. And then when I'm saying, hey, if you want more information, I'm going to be doing deep dives on how I would make this kind of um, this kind of product or this kind of thing. Uh, sign up because I only do it for exclusive ones that are signed up to my newsletter. Let's see, I'm building a directory of products built with no code tools. Directory will help understand. Let me know if you're if you're building something awesome and want it to get listed. Okay, so then I'm just kind of just getting in the ecosystem. But this all allows you to create content that people are going to want to join. Like, say, for instance, let's go to SendFox. SendFox.com. I think slash doc. I think that was mine. I think I got it. Right. So this is like an example that we had. Uh, we built with like with SendFox, right? So get my best tech stacks delivered to your inbox. Took this exactly from like Noah Kagan. Uh, just jacked most of the language right there get my best tech stacks delivered to your inbox join my mail uh, my email list and get my favorite uh content regularly unsubscribe anytime and then it says let me read first and this is why i actually like send fox if a lot of people are just getting started because it's super super easy uh, because then on the back end if they're not ready to to subscribe i can just have it just plugged in to my videos my articles the things i say on on twitter and they can just know more about me before they even subscribe. And then they they have everything. I really like, if people are like, I need to create a newsletter and I just need something simple. Like 95% of the time, I'm just like, yeah, just, just use SendFox. It does everything. And that's how we do our weekly newsletter. We have ConvertKit and then we add it with SendFox. Let me see in the comment section if this makes sense. Does make sense. Okay, cool. Yeah. So. Again, so to begin, that's the main thing. If you're uh, now, the next part is a lot of people are like, "Well, I'm just not. I'm never going to be ready for live streaming." Um, just pick a date and pick a place or a situation where you feel comfortable. I know that's easier said than done. Like when I live stream, I already know that I got to be in a comfortable chair. Uh, I have to have carpet underneath me, so and I'm barefoot, so I feel comfortable, and I know I have to have some kind of camera that puts, you know, that has me in my chair. If you look at it, I'm not standing up. There's some people that answer questions and they have their phone and like they're holding it out like this. My, my arms get tired. Like I, I just don't feel comfortable doing it that way. So just find something that allows you to either a space in the house where you feel comfortable, a time of day, a day of the week that is better. I live stream on Wednesdays mainly because Mondays I usually have, mon uh, I have meetings 
or I'm filming and I just don't feel like live streaming. Fridays, I don't feel like live streaming. I like either listening to a podcast, listening to audiobook, walking, stuff like that. So midweek is when I live stream and I feel energized and I'm ready to go. Also, too, it allows me to be more creative because maybe I heard of stories earlier in the week and then I can change things out. Just like Krista messaged me on Twitter. If I did at the beginning of the week, usually I just don't have like communication on Twitter or people asking me questions. So Wednesday works for me. And remember, um, consistency is key. Even if it's 15 minutes or 10 minutes every single week, we've been doing this streak for almost like a year and a half. I think it's been a year and a half. Yeah, we haven't missed a week. Um, I correction, we missed one week, uh, but that's because I think the week before we like live stream like seven times or something or five times. But for the most part, you now have a huge library ahead of anyone else. If someone is only producing one piece of content per month or every other month or something like that, if you can create one live stream per week and then you can create 25 to 35 pieces of content from that one live stream, like you just basically blew everyone else out of the water, right? So it's, yeah, it's walking now, soaking in your info. Awesome, good times. Yeah, just just pick something that works. And by the way, there was some of our, some of our, um, Members, shout out to Nyota, one of the OGs of the community. Um, she used to do walking live streams where she would just walk and people loved her energy when she was walking. Just pick something that works for you and what your audience likes, right? Just pick something that allows you to keep going and be sustainable. Uh, there's going to be a link down below. Uh, me and Hanny, the CEO of Repurpose.io, we did a whole course, a breakdown of how to get started with Repurpose what you need to do, all of those things. I'll drop it in the comment section down below. But remember, this is about you just making small steps. Instead of thinking about, I'm going to make 25, 35, 42 pieces of content that's possible with re repurpose, let's talk about just creating great content that people will love, that people will like, and you live stream it. That's it. And once you're done live streaming, you never have to think about it again. You don't even have to think about how you break it up yet. Just get in the habit of just live streaming, going live once a week. That's awesome. Then once you have a catalog, you can go back. In a catalog, that can be two episodes. Then you can go back and start structuring it. And I guarantee you, this is what's going to take your content to the next level because if you release that much content, you're going to see what resonates really quickly and what doesn't. If you're only releasing one long form content, like there are some people on this channel that like the 45 minute to an hour show. For the most part, people clock out at about five minutes. What do we do? We release eight minute to 12 minute videos also because then we know they're going to watch about approximately 43 to 52% of those videos versus watching one of these videos. You'll see later on uh, in, in the next couple of weeks, you'll see this longer video repurposed and put in different uh, repurposed groups on our channel all over the place because we understand the cycle of what people are doing. We only can find that out if you put out content and see what people want. Yeah, this is live streaming changes the game. Live streaming changes the game. And by the way, also live streaming allows you to find your real audience if people don't like you. Um, if sometimes my style, I, I get a very, uh, some people hate my style of they're like, oh, you ramble too much. You go on like this. That's even better because guess what? That cuts out the people I don't want on my channel anyway. So when you're creating these live experiences, you can start having content that resonates with people and then propels the people you don't want to even work with or don't want in your community anyway. It works out. Everyone has a different audience, different cadence. If you're looking at uh, YouTube videos, if you look at the difference between like Nick Nimmin, Roberto, Roberto Blake, different cadence, different styles to deliver, talking about essentially a lot of the same things or a lot of overlap the cadence, how you resonate with the person, it changes. So when you're creating your own live streaming, you're going to see the same thing. People will love you for, for you. And it's awesome. Okay. So again, we'll be talking more about this. And if people want to see like the numbers of like going from 100 to a thousand and like a, a deep dive of like the exact videos that we used, how do we pivot on the videos? How do we re-edit or change like the cadence of the videos, all of those things. That's a deep dive into like analytics. 
But if you want that, let me know in the comment section down below because then we're gonna be doing more videos like this if people like to see how we're automating and streamlining our business. Now, if you notice right there, as we just like broke that down, that was another call to action. So we could use that as a segment or if they're watching it all, they now know, okay, well, I, if I want to see more information, I got to comment or do something. What channel is the channel with Solidity? Let me drop it in the chat. So that is Maker Tech Tools. We might change the name, but for right now, it's Maker Tech Tools. And that is, you'll see where I'm talking about Solidity. Um, I'm working on a course making an NFT marketplace from uh, the guys at BuildSpace. So all of those things, I'm going to drop it in the chat right now. And uh, you can see all of those things and uh, in the building process. And again, you'll see this. This is another channel from like raw. You're seeing me build another channel out just on a different subject. So you can see also how we're doing the same thing. So I'm dropping this in the chat. Um, yeah, that's Maker Tech Tools. And you're seeing me build out and talk about smart contracts and what, what I'm learning and how to do it. And if you want to follow along, I'm not getting sponsored by them. If you want to look at like how we're doing it, uh, Build Space is a great resource. This is what I talk about a lot because it has helped me in uh, building smart contracts and everything like that. But um, it allows you to work on some really crazy projects. And I like it better than just like um, boring tutorials. So like build and deploy your first Web3 app on Ethereum with Solidity and smart contracts. Did that. Now I'm working on generate your own limited edition NFT collection and deploy it with Ethereum in two weeks. So that's another project we're working on. I'll drop this in the chat. So you'll see on the other channel, I'll be going live talking about what I'm building, where I'm at in the process, all of those things. The reason it's not on the main channel is because that has to do with coding for right now. And the things that we're looking at, it's just not possible with no code at this moment. Bubble is doing some interesting things and in other other no code platforms like Builder. They're allowing you to have like different Chrome extensions and do a couple things with Ethereum and do those things. But um, writing the contracts and right now we do um, that's over there on that space. So if you're interested, check out Build Space. They're actually free. You can get access to their courses when they go live. They have different cohorts every two weeks. Really, really interesting um, path that they're going to get started down. And so we're interested in what they do. Check them out. They're free and uh, you can get access for that. But again, the other channel, I'll, I'll go live a couple of times a week, uh, usually on Tuesdays. So on my Tuesday show, that's where we're talking about smart contracts. That with That is with another guest star, Brent Jackson. Brent Jackson. I know another Brent Jackson. Brent Simpson um, and all of those things. Okay. So. If you're interested in this, if you want to check out Repurpose or know more about automation, let me know. Again, I'll drop that again in the chat. And thank you so much for joining us today. If you like this, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. We do this every single week to make sure that we're bringing the very best in no code in tech to you. And thank you so much for everyone for joining and being here. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about even more stuff with NFTs and all of those things. So we'll go from there. Eli says, you think I uh, you think I can use software in every link from collection going to OpenSea, any no-code landing page builder? Yeah, it doesn't matter. You could use software. Software is our choice for a lot of builders. Um, yeah, if you're going to make a directory or do something with OpenSea, yeah, go with it. Yeah, software is not going to be a problem with you. Just cre create a directory or something like that. Great idea. Love it. Yeah, we're going to be talking about a couple of things we're doing with uh, OpenSea and some things with no code. All right, everybody. Again, thank you so much for your time and being here. We're here a little bit early because uh, Vid Summit is going to be starting in about 45 minutes. So we'll be seeing you next week. Again, thank you so much for your time. Um, and we'll see you on this channel or on Maker Tech Tools. All right, everybody. 